We've talked so far very much in the abstract about how message passing insulates you from the physical communications network, but it's important to realize um, that actually this model maps very well onto what real uh, supercomputer parallel computer hardware looks like. And that's one of the reasons why message passing as a model has been so successful uh, over the past three decades, basically. Here's a picture of a machine which was the national supercomputer uh, in the UK um, until in, in the early 2010s, um, uh, Hector, which was also located at EPCC, uh, National EPSERC Service. Uh, it's just a reasonably nice picture. The important point that the architecture of this machine, like any parallel computer, distributed memory computer, is it has lots of uh, processors or individual computers, each with their own locally attached memory, and then there's a physical interconnect which is wires them together. And that allows you to build an architecture which you can make bigger and bigger and bigger because you just add more of these nodes and you have a, a more powerful network. And this actually maps very nicely onto the message passing model. In the message passing model, we think of processes, but they'll be running on a particular computer. So we'd have a process here, a process here. And in message passing, to send data between processes, you send messages, which is exactly what happens physically. The data will go down the interconnect and appear over here. And so it's, although this um, course isn't about hardware, it's really about the message passing model and MPI in particular, it's just useful to recognize that the message passing model maps very nicely onto the architecture which large parallel computers have, which is distributed memory. And that's one of the reasons it's been so successful over the years. So I'm just gonna have a little diagram here to, to illustrate how process communication works in practice. We've got uh, process one with its some data and the, some memory and its data and process two with its memory, uh, which is some data. And we want to think of process one running, for example, on my laptop here in Edinburgh and process two running on my collaborator's laptop, which could be somewhere in Australia. So I want to send some data from my laptop here in Edinburgh to my collaborator's laptop over there in Australia. So I'm running a program which says something like A equals 23, and that sets in my memory space a value, uh, the data A to 23. I now want to transfer that data to process two, to my collaborator in Australia. And the way I do that in the message passing model is I send a message. Now, it will turn out that this is imp implemented as some kind of function call. So here I've just said there's a magic function call called send, which sends the data A to process two. Okay. Now we'll see what these are actually called in MPI later on. So what that does is it sends the data from my laptop to, to my collaborator's laptop. However, there's no way that my lap, the, a program running on my laptop is allowed to directly modify the memory of uh, my collaborator's laptop in Australia. All hell would break, break loose if you're allowed to do that. And so a good analogy here is what actually happens is the data goes into an inbox. So we're thinking here, maybe sending a message like sending an email and it goes into my collaborator's inbox. And this is a very good analogy because sending an email to somebody does not transfer the data. If I sent my collaborator an email, that would not transfer any data unless my collaborator reads the email. And the, the equivalent in message passing is that every send has to have a receive. Sending a, a message is an active two-sided process. The sending process has to actively call a send and the receiving process has to actively call a receive. So process two is saying, I want to receive some data from process one and I will put it into my, my variable B. And so once you've issued the receive, the variable B on process two is set to 23. So we successfully transfer the variable A from process one on my laptop to process two on my collaborator's laptop in Australia. But now process two can do something interesting. It can say, well, A equals B plus one. Now that sets process two's uh, variable A to be 24. So that's important to realize that these are completely different set processes running on different computers. And just as process one has a variable A and process two has a variable A, there's no reason why they should have the same value, okay? So, just because the variable has the same name, there's no reason it should have the same value. And that we'll see later that can be surprisingly confusing. But just to recap, this simple, very simple diagram illustrates um, some very, very important points. So I'll go through it again. If I want to transfer some data from process one on my laptop to process two on my collaborator's laptop, I set a local variable to be the data I want. I have to actively call a send. I say, I want to send that data to process two. That doesn't actually transfer the data. In message passing, data is only transferred 
uh, if the sender actively calls a send and the receiver actively calls a receive. So process two has to say, I want to receive data from process one. Process two is in complete control of its own memory. It can decide where to put that message. And here it decides to put in a variable B, but it can then assign its own variable A to be B plus one. So its variable A is 24, completely different from process one's variable A, variable A which is 23. So this is really quite an important diagram and you need to understand what's going on here. Now, why this might seem slightly more uh, confusing, what in practice will turn out to be slightly more confusing than you might think, is that most message passing um, programs, and MPI in particular, use something called the single program multiple data model. In this diagram here, I've sh in the previous diagram, I showed the two processes running different programs. But in fact, in the standard model SPMD, all processes run their own copy of the same program. Each process has a separate copy of the data. That's why it's called single program multiple data. They're running the same program, but they're different copies of the same program. So each copy has completely separate data. As I said, the memory on my laptop is totally separate from the memory of, on the laptop of my collaborator in Australia. Now, you might say, well, wait a second. If every process is running the same program or a copy of this, their own copy of the same program, why don't they do the same thing? Well, each process has access to a unique identifier. It can say, am I, what, tell me what process I am. And process one will, will be told your process one and process two will be told your process two. And once you've done that, you can do different things. So although you're running a, a, a copy of the same program, the two programs are identical, except that if they ask, what's my unique identifier, then they will get different numbers. And in MPI, this is called the rank. Once you've done that, processes can follow completely different control paths. On their process, you can say if I'm process one, do something. If I'm process two, uh, do something completely different. Okay, so we'll see. It's not at, this that might sound very restrictive. SPMD, you have to run multiple copies of the same program, but in practice, it's not restrictive because you can take different control paths based on your process ID. Now, again, uh, for a program to work in the SPMD model, we're just running processes. In message passing, we run multiple processes. And your laptop might have four physical cores. You can run 100 processes on it. There's nothing to stop you doing that. But in real applications of message passing, you also usually run one process per processor or per processor core. And the reason is we're interested in performance. So if your laptop has four, pro has four CPU cores, if you run four processes, then you will hopefully have one process running on each CPU core, it will potentially go up to four times faster your program. However, you run five, six, seven, eight processes, they will all run simultaneously, but actually they're just being shuffled around, scheduled onto different CPU cores at once, uh, at different times. So although um, the model doesn't talk about processes and cores, it talks about processes, to get performance, we usually run just one process per processor core. So if I had a quad core laptop, I would normally just run four processes, although I can run as many as I want. So I talked about um, the SPMD, meaning everyone having to run the same program, but it's not really a restriction because you might say, well, let, I want to have a controller worker a situation where one process is the controller has all the data and the other process is the workers and the controller sends tasks to the workers and then retrieves the results. Sure, I need two programs there, one program to run on the controller, a controller program, on one program to run on all the workers, the worker program. Well, yes, in principle, you could do that, but in message passing, what we do is we stick them together in the same program and we would just make them different functions or subroutines. And so if you want to have a program where different processes are doing different things, you just write a single program, a single main here in C, and you say, you'll work out what your unique ID is, and we'll see later how to do that. And you say, if I'm the controller process, I call the controller function, else everyone else calls the worker function. So. Only one process runs this function here, and n minus one other processes run this function here. And the same in Fortran. If I'm the controller process, then call the controller function, then call the work. So if you had two programs you want to run on different processes, then you just stick them together into one program and make them different functions and call them optionally based on your, on your process ID. So although it might seem like a, a big restriction um, on, on what you can do in practice, SPMD is, um, is not a restriction. And one of the reasons we use SPMD is a single program, multiple data. If you wanted to run 100, 1,000 processes, you're not going to want to write 100 or 1,000 programs. 
and launch one of them on each process. It's much simpler to write a single program and launch multiple copies of it. So we, so far we've talked about messages and 